Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And today we wanna to talk a little bit about Bitcoin, this massive sell-off we got over the last 24 hours. Um, what might be some of the causes of that? Um, and um, uh, the, uh, quite a big scare that um, some traders got over the course of the last 24 hours. So let's talk about that a little bit today. Uh, as well, we're going to discuss um, Richard Hart's uh, Hexcoin project a little bit. Um, and we're going to talk about um, some um, arbitrage um, opportunity that seemingly has taken place with Bitcoin and YK on the Freedom Exchange. So, um, in looking at what some of the causes and some of the factors could be in the price of the decline of Bitcoin. You know, I, th I think it's very important. In several past videos, we've talked quite a, a great deal about fundamental analysis versus technical analysis. And with fundamental analysis, of course, you're able to gather the information and understand some of the driving forces behind the market, whereas technical analysis uh, uh, seemingly or the philosophy is it factors in the already these uh, outcomes, which which is kind of very difficult for me to to gauge that, uh, seeing that future events can pop up and change things. Some of my earlier predictions with Bitcoin, uh, I made the eight hundred dollar uh, Bitcoin prediction, um, and a lot of people just thought that was utterly ridiculous, but. Um, and understand the driver force behind Bitcoin um, and some of the analysis and a lot of data provided over the course of several videos. Um, there, there are many factors that went into that. You know, for instance, um, uh, the efficiency of miners, uh, the, the, uh, the the amount, what it costs to mine a Bitcoin, which is around sixteen hundred dollars at this uh, point in time. Um, now, of course, Wordy actual vi value of, of bitcoins at and what the uh, what the market dynamics and, and when it's trading when it hits the market and starts to trade at a premium that is quite natural for an asset to uh have a high a more inflated value when it hits the market than what's its true value right so uh in other words if it costs about sixteen hundred dollars to mine a bitcoin uh in a variety of things and and um uh, that, um, you know, not taking that into consideration, but taking into consideration s some actual demand factors where we got a very stable Bitcoin around 800 to to $1,000. But moving on to if it costs about 1600 bucks to mine a Bitcoin, then that means miners can profit um, over that threshold. So if a Bitcoin is at around $3,200, it's quite plausible for miners to get a lot of value um, over uh, a $3,200 Bitcoin. Now, other factors that go into Bitcoin after that price uh, is what we got in some of our fundamental analysis, the trade uh, wars that are going on with the United States that drove the Dow down. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we're able to factor that when the stock market is crashing, cryptocurrencies can generally be sought after as a, a safe haven, much like gold. Um, so um, the, tr the problem with the trade wars, though, if we want to add that as part of some of the driving factors with the price of Bitcoin, uh, which I think is safe to say they were, uh, the problem with that is there's a great deal of pressure on the United States and the Trump administration with these trade wars and the suffering of the uh, um, um, American economy to the point that I do think that the Trump administration will have to fold at some point in time. Now, the problem with that, if the Trump administration folds, then that means uh, um, and come to some resolution, then that means that those factors will no longer impact the price of Bitcoin uh, like I believe they've done over the course of the last several days. Moving on from that to some of the, the other information that came out, um, which some people believe the institutions getting involved in Bitcoin, um, to be quite, um, uh, or how I see it is a lot of that data and information has already been included into the market, and it was several months ago. 
you know, w- what happened with Bitcoin. So as far as these institutions like Fidelity, Starbucks, Microsoft, eBay, uh, which corrected and said it's not that they're accepting Bitcoin, but it's more or less a gift card type thing. Factors we had already been using, um, uh, you know, things, uh, methods we had already been aware of and using with cryptocurrency up to now. I don't really think that was what drove the price uh, that high. I do think Facebook coins uh, is um, uh, is impacting some of the market with that as well. And I think their product might be released as early as next month. And so I think those are all uh, some key factors as to what might be affecting this, this Bitcoin price. Right. But um, in, in understanding why the price of Bitcoin goes up. You also need to understand the factors of why it goes down. And that's why these this type of analysis is so important. Um, and uh, as far as um, ideas like FUD and a variety of things, yes, FUD does exist and it does impact markets. That is true. People panic sale. Those are true things. But um, the reality is, as well, uh, FUD can, can, uh, can, doesn't, in the, in the long term will affect the the liquidity of the cryptocurrency markets of Bitcoin and, and the value there. So uh, whereas when some people blame FUD, I you know I think that uh, it's very limited to what FUD can do with Bitcoin these days. Uh, so I would say that FUD is a very I would say FUD at this point in time is a is a is a very minimal uh, problem to Bitcoin. Um, you know, in fact, uh, with all the negative news that came out um, with Bitcoin over the or cryptocurrency in general over the last uh, several days uh, or a few weeks, uh, it actually moved in the opposite direction, which means that if it was just a matter of people putting out bad news to cause the price of Bitcoin to go down in cryptocurrencies, then uh, that would be happening all the time. And we definitely wouldn't see the market moving in the opposite direction. Um, but with all those things considered and, and understand those things, then we have a better chance of understanding if the, what's driving the price of Bitcoin up and if we should be buying and why we should be buying and where we should be buying. Um, cooking a little food. So periodically I have to stop the video, but you probably won't even notice I was gone. But anyway, if you see that little pause thing in the corner, I just, that's what's happening with that after cooking while I'm doing video. So, <laughs> but, um, um, anyway, getting back to that, but th- those, those factors are very important to, you know, what's driving the price of Bitcoin up and, and, and what's driving the price of Bitcoin down. Now the issue, uh, or, or what I see as a severe problem, um, in the Bitcoin markets, uh, is some believe, uh, one of the factors as well, uh, for the decline in price of Bitcoin was, that there may have been a syndicate or some type of conglomerate or maybe even an individual well who caused the price of Bitcoin to fall from um, all the way down to $6,200 on some exchanges, about 20% loss. Now, that's a huge problem. If one well, if one well anytime they want can cause the price of Bitcoin to, to fall 20%, we see that we're in, in a serious problem here. Now, I don't know if that was true, but some people believe it was because they believe it it, 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 the, it seemed so coordinated, I guess, uh, that it probably was from one group or something to that effect. In any event, uh, there was, that's really bad. It shows the lack of liquidity in the, in the markets, right? And uh, what and the only way to solve that issue, right, the liquidity issue, is find out where the support levels of Bitcoin are at their best. A lot of people, again, think $3,200 is very ridiculous. They don't believe we're going back to $3,200, and they may actually be correct. The only thing I'm trying to impart in this video is that when you can move a market that quick, that fast, about 20%, and if it's true as one person, then that ought to be a signal to uh, investors that uh, um, those markets can't hold. These are paper tigers, right? Paper tigers, these are paper thin walls, you know, meaning it can't hold. So that means if those support levels can't hold there, then 
then, um, you know, there is, you know, there is not going to be a very sec much security in, 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 um, uh, uh, um, mark price Bitcoin on the incline, um, r rising up in value that way, especially abruptly, uh, the way it is probably would be a great deal better if it gradually would increase in value instead of these huge movements and huge fallbacks, like what we're getting. Um, of course the, uh, the support came back up to support that, um, it dropped about too close two thousand dollars and the price of bitcoin uh, went up about another thousand dollars as we can see here so it was down close to 20 percent now it's down about nine percent at the time of this video um but even so again the fact that it can move like that is very very problematic so want to move on from that and um and kind of uh, related to the next topic, which is uh, the hex coin by Richard Hart. So a lot of people who watch the channel know I've been anticipating this uh, cryptocurrency, and I found that it does create the demand that I think is going to be necessary in the cryptocurrency markets, and it, it makes a great deal of sense in, in many ways uh, when addressing that. And so this is Richard Hart's uh, project. Uh, and as you can see here, it says it's the first high interest blockchain certificate of deposit. So thinking about the concept of something like Bitcoin. And of course, here it says free for Bitcoin holders. You know, so thinking about the idea of Bitcoin in the concept of um, the this programmable money. Uh, it, you know, you move on from that to Hexcoin, right? Because if you have programmable money, what's the next uh, progression to that programmable interest? And that's what Hexcoin is on a decentral in a decentralized manner. Uh, you're able to gain interest, right? Programmable money and programmable interest. Interesting enough, uh, I did a video uh, the other day about Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary stars on a a big uh, national television show called Shark Tank where people come in, uh, inventors, uh, um, people who create new products and businesses seeking venture capital. And Kevin O'Leary has just slammed Bitcoin uh, in cryptocurrency markets very harshly and, uh, um, you know, um, kind of came as a surprise to me. I thought maybe he would see some value in Bitcoin. Many times venture capitalist firms are going to be interested in cryptocurrency to a great degree. Not all because, you know, of course there's legal parameters about, um, you know, um, uh, having, uh, you know, managing other people's money in, in, in this private equity firms. Um, and so, uh, of course, cryptocurrencies, you know, give over many legal issues in that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> but yet still, <clears throat> excuse me, venture capitalists still at the end of the day are all about returns on investments and making money. It's not emotional um, business for them to the point where they're just going to go, well, you know, it'd be best for me not to make money and not invest in cryptocurrency um, because uh, I just don't like it. So because I don't like it, I'm going to make an emotional decision not to buy it. Right. No, that's not what that that's not how it works. I know that's been kind of narrative that's been going around quite a bit, uh, but uh, that's not really how it works. Um, my best guess is somebody like Kevin O'Leary is equating what's happening with cryptocurrency to something like the tulip markets uh, in um, in the Netherlands around the 1600s, where um, it was this, uh, you know, this fiasco with collecting tulips. And uh, it was this huge market crash. Uh, and that's a very interesting. If you haven't studied about the tulip tulip markets, right, and crashes, it's very interesting. I, I, I know we generally hear about uh, it, you know, in passing. But when you really get into the details of how they went about driving this market and what they had to go through with these tulips and how it worked, it's very quite interesting. But uh, anyway, uh, interesting enough, Kevin O'Leary was speaking about how uh, cryptocurrency has no interest in a, in a variety of things like that. Well, he didn't know about Hexcoin. And I think Hexcoin would make a great deal more sense to him than a lot of other cryptocurrencies because that's what Hexcoin is. Now, 
uh, has coin found a bug in it and I'm, I'm glad they reported it and I'm glad that they're transparent about that and working on that. Um, and, but when it does come out, I think that, um, you know, it's going to, it's it, at least for me, as far as I can ascertain, I think it deals with the demand in cryptocurrency. I, I think Bitcoin at its price right now leaves something to be desired about uh, being able to support the levels it's at. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. You know, you have to um, <clears throat> do your own research. And, and that's the thing about it. Uh, in understanding cryptocurrency and understand the value of, of cryptocurrencies going up, try to understand as well what would make it go down. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so if you can tell a good story about why it should it should go up and is you can even look at yourself and see if you're using it and, and would you use it in place of, of some of the, the monetary systems you're using now, you know, or would you forego using it for convenience of some of the monetary markets you're involved in right now? So if you can, if you can honestly answer some of those questions, then I think you can kind of pretty much get a better idea of, you know, what the value of Bitcoin is going to be, how it's going to go up and, and, and a variety of things. And, uh, um, you know, also keeping very much in mind that, uh, um, you know, like I say in many videos, we're very much in agreement with blockchain technology being the future, right? Where we uh, part ways, I think, is when we say, and thus it represents this particular coin. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think there is a vast difference between saying blockchain technology and some people say, well, you got to be talking about Bitcoin because uh, Bitcoin is the dominant one. Yes, it may be the dominant one, but there are other uses for blockchain technology, such as decentralization of, of artificial intelligence, which Singularity.net does. And it's not part of Bitcoin. Um, so those are some some key ideas you need to ask yourself uh, about this. Um, keeping all that in consideration, moving on to my project, BitcoinMYK.com. And again, guys, I don't just talk about it because I just think it's a great idea to make myself rich. I've done some research and analysis on Bitcoin MYK, and it just makes sense from, um, from a, a fundamental, uh, uh, area, right? Just like Bitcoin or rather Hexcoin does because of the, idea of the first high interest blockchain certificate of deposit, right? Which creates demand because if you got programmable money, people want, you know, interest, obviously. And that makes a lot of sense. So why do I talk about BitcoinMYK.com? Well, interesting enough, BitcoinMYK, where it fits in all of this and, and why I think it's some things to consider uh, from a very serious perspective, where it says here with the hex coin free for Bitcoin holders, there are some very much similarities to Bitcoin MYK and what hex coin is doing with that. And the reason it's free for Bitcoin holders, if you really think about it, right, a lot of cryptocurrency value has went into Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin dominates the cryptocurrency market with the remainder uh, going into altcoins, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And that value makes up the cryptocurrency market. Now, the problem is, as you move money out of Bitcoin, um, the altcoins will, at points in time, usurp the value from Bitcoin and vice versa. The problem with me, myself coming in and having you purchase Bitcoin MYK or maybe something like Hexcoin, I can't speak for Hexcoin, but I'm, I'm just kind of making an assumption here based on maybe what I think would be a good idea about it, but instead of usurping that value, right, in a sense, what's happening is it, it makes more sense than that I don't have to liquidate my Bitcoin to buy some other altcoin, right? And I think that gives advantages, obviously, to the Bitcoin holders as well. And Bitcoin NYK does a similar thing. Now, the next part, I would say, <clears throat> um, about Bitcoin NYK, I would say that then if, <clears throat> excuse me, if you take a project like Hescoin, if it's the programmable interest to the programmable money, then something like Bitcoin MYK would be the 
social interaction and network to the cryptocurrency market. So the thing is, there are great projects like the Steam blockchain, steamit.com, that is become the greatest social network there is, right? But, and it, 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 it has some similarities. In fact, it, it, um, in studying some of the history of the Steam blockchain and Steamit.com in particular, uh, a lot of the, as I understand it, the uh, development of it came over from Bitcoin to the point where some people uh, even say it's kind of Bitcoin, right? It, it, it's Bitcoin. It's like the social media Bitcoin. Because if you think about it, the reason you need social media is because social media is part of the network itself. It's part of us being able to interact within the network. And this is why I believe Bitcoin over the last decade only has 50 million confirmed wallets. Uh, and some people estimate it's only about really 4 million Bitcoin users in period. Uh, because of course, many of the wallets are duplicates. I probably have several Bitcoin wallets myself. So this is all very important because what it's saying then is that if we have these great concepts in, in uh, cryptocurrency, whereas you have something like Bitcoin, which is a programmable money, and then you have something like Hescoin, which is a programmable interest. Then you have something like uh, um, Bitcoin and YK, which is a network for crypto because the social interaction, right? It, it, for Bitcoin, um, and um, sites like Steam, the Steam blockchain, uh, uh, are, are part of that. But this, the Steam ecosystem, whereas I think it's a great ecosystem, it works great. We're actually a Steam based token as well, uh, similar to what you get with ERC20 tokens, so. Uh, Steam Steam makes sense. The Steam at block the Steam blockchain with the Steam at application makes a, a great deal of sense, right? Now, the the Steam blockchain can host many varieties of this social network interaction, but that blockchain has done it the best thus far, and that's and that's why this is so important to the to the conversation. Now, the only difference is I would make with Bitcoin and YK in this complete integration. Is whereas where you get something like with uh, um, Hexcoin, where they um, um, they they actually give the Hexcoins free to Bitcoin users holders rather, Bitcoin NYK does the same thing. It it gives the Bitcoin NYK tokens free to Bitcoin holders. So as far as Bitcoin is concerned, right, Bitcoin NYK we feel is a is a version of Bitcoin that actually facilitates the social interaction part of it. And how important is that? It's very important. It's very important because if you don't have a social network engagement specifically for something like Bitcoin on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain, then it makes it very difficult for people to really identify with it, right? It, it makes it hard to identify with it. Uh, and because of that, it's going to cause Bitcoin to suffer and it's going to cause the demand to suffer. Right. And so that's why this is also key. And this is also very important, guys. Um, so. Um, going into the arbitrage situation with Bitcoin, MYK dot com right now, uh, we're trading as well on Freedom Exchange. We're trading on the Steam Engine Market and we trade on Waves. Now, uh, what we've noticed is that there's a, there's a slight arbitrage situation formed on a freedom exchange. Um, we believe that the, the tokens, um, uh, about three and a half cents, I think right now over on the freedom exchange is about two and a half cents on, uh, the steam engine marketplace at, at this point in time. So there is some opportunity. Generally these things start to correct. They start to come closer together, but, uh, that's what, what we have happening right now. With Bitcoin and YK.com. Uh, so if you're a Bitcoin holder, uh, another thing I say real quick about Bitcoin NYK.com, whereas it gets difficult with Bitcoin to gauge the value, <clears throat> excuse me, of Bitcoin because of the whales coming in, they can cause the market to go down 20%, go up 20%, and a variety of things like that. So, again, we're dealing with these paper tigers, these paper walls. With Bitcoin NYK.com, because it's a network, what is the value based on? It's based on the users of the network, right? It has an interface that 
similar to Facebook's interface. So where do you, where are you going to get something like Facebook coin with this large network to move that value back and forth? Bitcoin NYK has that structure in place and it's free to Bitcoin holders. So you don't have to liquidate your Bitcoin and get an altcoin, right? And, and, and get rid of that Bitcoin value. You get Bitcoin NYK tokens free and you can move them across several blockchains because it's a universal bridge cryptocurrency, right? And so we'll leave some links in the description, um, uh, for you guys interested in that, especially you Bitcoin holders, because this is very important, very radical, very revolutionary, what we're talking about, BitcoinNYK.com. You have to take a moment and let it sink in and understand what it really is. Um, but that's what's going on, and that's our thoughts on what's been happening with the Bitcoin price and a variety of things. I'm going to go eat now, guys, because I've been cooking and doing this video at the same time. Uh, but feel free to contact us to get more information about BitcoinNYK.com. We'll also leave a link in the description for Hexcoin. That's going to be coming out. You can join our affiliate affiliate um, link there and, and earn some um, Bitcoin NYK for doing it. Uh, and there's some great projects coming out that are going to change crypto, are going to revolutionary, revolutionize crypto. Great think tanks like Richard Hart, great think tanks in the BitcoinNYK.com project that really know how to address cryptocurrency issues so you don't have to deal with the paper tigers the paper walls because the value is uh, is based on the network and the people using it and the people in the network it is not based on the price of the markets in the cryptocurrency market it is based on your activity under the proof of participation model but that's all i want to say in this video guys if you like content like this don't forget to like subscribe and until next time take care